Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31. I had entitled this sermon, Sand in My Shoes. And um, a lot of things in life can wear us down. And sand in your shoes can be one of them. And I'll explain that title in a few. But Isaiah chapter 40, 28 through 31, a very familiar portion of Scripture for many here. It says, Thou hast not known, has that not known, has that not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth the power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. In the battle of life, there's things that collect on us. Small little things that when we first go out and do things in our life, it has no effect, really. But over a period of time, it can start to weigh down the little things. In the military, they start you off with a small pack. Then they eventually put more and more and more on. And as you eventually get the heavy pack, you're used to it. But still, it's a process. First off, you start with the small things. And we think we can handle those small things. But as these small things continue to add up, it can become a wearisome time. And in our life, what happens? The devil loves to do nothing more than to add another grain of sand to your already weight in life, the weariness. And there's a time in your life where it becomes a frustration or in our text, we grow faint. And this is something that is not going to, and if it happens, but actually when. Because I believe that the longer we're saved, the more, if we do not take care of this, we will grow weary. It's part of the, the battle is the wearing down of the saints. And, but yet to not give up, but to have a victory. And we'll look tonight on the sand in our, sho our shoes, but also the constant attack. Many of you have heard this illustration before, Roberto Duran. I believe it was uh, him and Sugar Ray Leonard back in the uh, early 80s. I believe 1980, maybe 82 or 3. They had their second fight. Roberto Duran was notorious, called the hands of stone, meaning he could take a punch and he could give a punch. But Sugar Ray Leonard was a more of a showboat, a, uh, a dancer, jumped around a lot, and but the first fight, Roberto Duran won, and you know won by a barely barely won the first fight. Second fight, Sugar Ray Leonard. Actually, what happened is he started to do something Roberto Duran actually did. He started to start to taunt his uh, his opponent, Roberto Duran. He would, uh, as the story goes, uh, Leonard. He did not only taunt uh, in the final rounds, uh, Sugar Ray. He didn't insult his wife or anything, but he was a confident in the rematch. During the, the fight, he stuck out his chin and started to showboat in the manner as Roberto had done to him in the final rounds of the first fight. So as the fight's going on, Sugar Ray Leonard's jumping around, moving, sticking his hat, his chin out, and this infuriated Roberto Duran. And instead of continuing the fight, it was the constant running around, constant jab and running back and forth. And Sugar Ray it was doing this the first four, five rounds until Roberto Duran utters the famous words of his life, no mas, no mas, and walks away. And Roberto Duran later tried to clarify it, and it's still something today. He says, I had stomach cramps. That's why I quit. But in, in actuality, the, the, actual, the, the people that actually saw the fight and, and many of the ringside, even his own corner, said Roberto Duran got frustrated with the taunting of the little things. It wasn't the punches of Sugar Ray that caused him to say, you know, I can't go out there, I can't go out there. 
But it was the little taunting, the little things, the little things that irritated him and ultimately became his downfall. So we got to be careful in our lives that we don't grow weary and take the little things in our life too serious. Amen. In our text, he says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might to increase their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Amen. This is not just words of, 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 of just, hey, we're going to doom you, but this is part of life. There's going to be a time in your life where you are going to be placed in a, in a situation where it's, it's going to be tough, and you're wanting to quit, and many times you will quit. It's, man, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you utter those words, no moss, no moss, or I quit, I quit. And we say that I can't take it no more because it's not the, fun, the one punch. I could take the one punch. But when it continually, 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 continually comes and comes and comes, you grow weary and you grow weary and you grow weary and you say no mas, no mas, no more, no more. This will happen. You'll come to those points in life that you'll want to quit. You want to say, you know what, I give, it in, I give in to, the, to the, the, the words. I give in to the, the things. And, you know what, and, and these are things that the Bible says, this is our human flesh. This is what we're in the battle. This is going to happen. So don't look at it as some kind of weird thing. Is you're going to grow weary. You're going to go through the battle. And it's the constant barrage against our lives, our minds. The sand, one grain of sand really doesn't affect me and now two or three or four or five now a lot of sand now that affects me a whole lot more in my life it starts off with one and these are the difficulties in our lives the faint the constant barrage of our lives the lying the accusing the assault against our mind our soul the physical sickness the lies of the past the lies of the future you can place whatever you have right there and say, this is what happens. Can you imagine ongoing? These are ongoing weariness. Man, I can't take it no more. I can't take it no more. They're, they're lying. They're, 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 it's accusations. The, the, the accusations are not even true. And, then, and, and the assaults. Again, I, I cannot imagine being the president of the United States, President Trump. I would quit tomorrow. Say, so you know what? Nah, forget it all. But this man keeps plugging away. I mean, there's lies, accusations, assaults every day. He didn't even do nothing. He woke up this morning. He wakes up. It's amazing. He can't, he can't wake up right. But yet it happens. But yet the physical assaults against our lives. I mean, the sickness. I mean, you pray for one and another crops up. What in the world's going on? And it's not, again, the one battle. I can understand the one battle. But when they continually, continually, continually come at you, come at you, come at you. The lies of our past. I thought I had a victory over that. I thought I defeated that. Man, gosh, here I go again. Here's the battle again. And now, more importantly, is the lies of our future. Can you imagine what God has for you now? What's going to happen to you? And the weariness and the fear of our future. We're not going to have a future. It's doom. It's doom. It's, it's the devil's going to have. He's going to take your family. He's going to take everything. He's going to destroy everything because the devil. And all of a sudden, all the things that we once believed, we lose. It's the constant barrage, the constant, constant attack. Revelations 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, come now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Day and night the devil assaults. The devil and his henchmen, the devil and the demonic forces are upon and assaulting and attacking and we need to be careful we don't listen to those little assaults because they add up. They add up. And it's the little things, the little cheap shots that things and happens. Man, you know what? You grow weary. You grow weary in those moments. They add up. Be careful that you don't keep them. You need to learn to let them go. 
the cheap shots that, that people say, the things that, they say, you know what, I, I got to let them go. I can't hold on to them. But what happens, we hold on to them. We hold on to the hurts of life, don't we? Where God, we say, you didn't help me here. You didn't help me here. You didn't help me here. You didn't help me. And we add all them up. Instead of just having one problem, we have 10, 20, 30 things in our pack. And now it becomes more of a burden because we're holding on to those things. And it surely becomes weary. One I can handle, but not 20 or 30. They become burdensome. See, holding on to little offenses, they're going to come. People are going to offend you. People are going to say things. But what happens is they, they hold on to these things. We hold on to these things. And they start to form us and shape us. And this is where people become bitter. People become bitter. And I always wondered how bitter people become bitter. Until I had an issue, I said, you know what? I need to re really check my heart because I can see it. It's not one day, just wake up, I'm bitter. But it's over a period of time. It's over a period of time that, that, that this a person becomes bitter. And I saw that in my own heart at times. Man, you know what? I need to be careful. Because I'm collecting all the things. I don't have a good filter system. And I'm collecting them all. I'm collecting them all. It's a one little violation, one little violation, one little violation, one little violation, one little violation. And next thing you know, I have a clogged heart. I become bitter. Things over a period of time have now caused me an offense. See, be careful what you listen to. The devil will surely lie to you about your past, your future, and who you are. We need to trust in God. But we listen so many times to the little things, the lies. It can shape our life. This is a story. Peter Jenkins, in 1973, started walking across America with his dog. He walked some 5,000 miles from New York to Oregon. It took him nearly six years. During the six-year journey, he was mugged, robbed three different times. He was stabbed one time. He was hit by a car, and his dog was killed by another car. After finishing his journey, he was interviewed and asked the question, was there ever a time when you wanted just to quit walking? He said, yes. The interviewer asked him, was it the mugging that made you want to quit? or the stabbing, or even get hit by the car, or the death of your dog. And he said, no, neither of those things made me want to quit. The interviewer said, then what was it that made you want to quit walking? When he, he, and, and what he said is, when I got sand in my shoes. It became an irritant. And getting sand in your shoes, it's not just one big gulp of sand. I hope not. Hopefully you have enough understanding. Say, so, you know what? I've got sand in my shoe. I need to get it out. But it's over a period of time as you're walking. It's the sand we don't see. We're just walking and it's kicked up. Or we're going about our day. And now it starts to add up and you wonder, where did this come from? It's a period of time. Now it starts to irritate your sock and then your shoe. And then all of a sudden it starts to become abrasive and your shoe starts to get blisters. And now or your feet start getting blisters. And now it's, it becomes a problem because it's not just the one grain of sand. It's a period of time. It's a period of, of life. It becomes an irritant. Sand is now becomes a discomfort. And now it affects the whole body. It starts to affect the whole body because it's irritating your feet. And so many times it's that one thing that starts to affect us. It's that one thing over a period of time it starts to affect us. And now it starts to take hold of our heart. Something somebody said, somebody did, something happened. Amen. It should be just taken and placed away. No problem. It's not going to affect me. But it's a period of time. It's a period over a course of time. That we grow weary. Even young people can grow weary. And even quit. Song of Solomon 2 verse 15. The little foxes that spoil the vines. The little foxes. Not the big. Not the, the wolf. Not the, the coyote. And then the little foxes. The little things. The little things in life can have an effect on us. And it can take us out of the picture. 1 Kings 19, verse 12, Elijah, he wants to quit over simple words, 
over simple words that Jezebel says to him. She could have easily killed him, but he said, you know what, I'm running. It was the words. It was something said. And now it took hold of his heart. Amen. And these moments from great victory to utterly running in defeat. God had to redeem him. God had to help him. But many times in our life, it's the little things. It's the little things we never really dealt with. We just let them add up. Because for one, they're little. I can't handle this. No problem. That's just a little thing. They offended me. They said something. They did this. No problem. But you never repent. You never get over it because it's still there. You never say, you know, I really do let it go. I let it go, man. This thing happens. I mean, the ongoing battle, I mean, of physical health. I mean, I, again, my wife has been through some things, and I know many of you have too. As, as, man, it's the ongoing battle. It's the ongoing battle. You know what? But I'm still, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. God is able. God is able. God is able. God is able. But can you imagine, it, man, the little things in life? They add up. Where is God? See, we run on our own strength. We run in our own strength. And man, I can do this myself because the little thing, the little thing, the little sand, you know, it's not really a big deal. I just move my shoe around and it's not irritating me no more, but it's still there. And now another thing adds. Now it's still, I can still move my shoe. No, it's not, no, no. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to take care of it. I should stop and take care of it now. I should deal with the issue now because it's going to affect me in the long run. But no, no, I, I can hang on. I can still do it. I can still do it. And this is what sin does in our own lives. Sin takes hold. It's just a little sin, but sin takes hold of us. And again, we're not talking about maybe a gross sin, but a sin that affects our hearts. How we treat one another, how we speak, I mean, how we act and do things. I mean, it, it, it's, it's over a period of time. All of a sudden, we used to love people and care for people, open up to people. Now, we hold back. Say, I'm not going to do that no more. It's the little things. It's the little things. Over a period of time, you never dealt with. You never really got it right. And we grow weary. I can do this myself. Can I tell you the scripture says otherwise? You can't do it yourself. In verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary. Even the young men shall utterly fall. It's going to be a time. It's not if, it's but when. If you try it on your own accord and your own ability outside of God, you need a good filter system. You need to stop at times and start looking at what you've gathered along your life. It's a time where you need to deal with these things. Amen. It's, you know what? I'm going to let them go. I'm going to let them go. Because many times we go back to that person years ago. You remember when you did this? Remember did that? No, I don't. I don't remember. What are you talking about? But to that person I offended, man, it's years. It's, you, 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 this is a, still a problem. Well, that should have been getting, got rid of a long time ago. Why are you still holding on to that? Because it's personal. It's personal. And this is what the devil loves to do. Make things very, very, very personal. Take you out of the kingdom of God. This is where we need to be careful. This is where we need to be careful. Because at this time in our life, we're weary. We're weary. We say things that we should never say. We act differently because it's the small things. There's sand in my shoe. It's irritating me. Now I'm more apt to speak out. I'm apt to say something because it's irritating me. And I need to deal with these things in my life. I need to deal with those things, man. I need to let go, man. I need to deal with those things. And the greatest thing, man, is knowing that you need help. You and I need help in life. You cannot go along and do this without God. You cannot stay in the battle without God intervening and helping you. You're going to have problems. You're going to have difficulty. You're going to need God. And this is where our scripture says, in verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank God there's the God. There's the God factor. In verse 28, is something I want to really cap on. 
is that has thou not known, has thou not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. Amen. Do you not know that God is in control and that God can filter the problems of our life? Call upon God. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, God can move. God has yet to move in lives and hearts, but God is still able. You might be burdened, you might be weary, but can I tell you, there's a God in heaven that can help you, that can help you and strengthen you. You're weary, you're frustrated, you're angry, you're, you're whatever situation. And can I tell you, there is a God in heaven that God needs to refresh and strengthen you and take out those things of your life. And this is where we need to do and say, you know what, God, I got to remember how powerful you are. Your deliverance is powerful. That I can cast my cares upon you. I can leave the things at the altar of God. I can deal the things that I carry, the little things. I need to deal with them now, not 20 years from now. But do the things now. Start dealing with them. Start dealing with them. And when the offenses come, to quickly get rid of them. The easiest way for the longevity for this man, if he was ever going to do the six-year walk, is that I'm sure he had to stop and empty his shoe. Because six years of sand, that has some impact. I'm sure the only thing he had to do was stop and take off a shoe and shake it. Problem solved. Problem solved. Simple thing. Why would he continue to walk any further if it's an irritant to him? Why would you and I, why do you and I continue down the road knowing these things will be a detriment to us? What we need to do is stop take off our shoes and empty the sand or deal with the issue that has affected us. We live in a generation that is quick to be offended. I'm offended. I'm offended. You're offended. And it's so quick. They, the word, you can't say things, political correctness, they're offended. But that, you know what? Christians shouldn't be easily offended. But we get offended. And we've taken on maybe the spirit of this world. So, you know what? We call them snowflakes. I'm in here just melting, just destroy. No, it's don't be that person then. Learn to give it to God. So, you know what? I'm going to press in. God, I come to you. God, help me, guide me, direct me. Amen. I got to realize that you're more powerful than my problems. You're more uh, gracious than, than I've ever been. To me, God, I got to give it to you. I've got to trust in you. Amen. Job 38, 45 says, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have an understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched a line upon it? And then God is asking Job, where were you? Tell me. Explain to me when I made the earth. Uh, I, I wasn't there. When you realize that scripture, who God is, we have no, uh, no other choice than to go to him. If God can build the foundation of the earth, and he doesn't need us to get involved, Surely God can handle the little things of our lives that have added up. The little sins, God, change me, God, help me. If we would just stop and pour out the offense. Pour out the hurt. There's some hurts. There's hurts in life. Stop and repent. You don't understand it, misunderstood. No problem. And the best way to do this is if we would just listen to God. Because God will speak to you about the sand in your shoes. Proverbs 15, verse 23, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. A word spoken in due season, how good it is. You ever been in a situation where you just need God to help you, to filter how you are thinking. And all of a sudden God speaks. We don't like what he says. But he speaks nonetheless. 
And that word clarifies things. Clarifies things. Pushes through all the junk, all the lies, all the sand. It says, you know what? Stop thinking this way. And I need to go back to where God is. God will speak to you about things. The word in due season from God. That's why it's important to come to church and be part of the things of God. Get around godly people. When the little irritants do affect us, men, to get it and bring it to God. Because God will speak to us. Stop, take off your shoe, pour it out. Pour it out, men, and keep going, keep going. Stay on the path because it will happen. It will happen. Offenses will come. You'll grow weary. It will come. It will happen. But what keeps you and I have that voice of God saying, you know what? You're going to make it. Don't die on the wrong battlefield. Don't let this one thing take you out of the kingdom of God. Don't let this affect your life. Don't let this hinder your walk. A word in due season. Oh, how good it is. It's like Pouring in the oil in the wine. It's that word that clarifies all of our blurry thoughts, all of our thoughts, all of our worries, all of our concerns. All of a sudden, that word in due season all of a sudden becomes the light comes on. I can see clear. I understand now, and it's refreshing my soul. My spirit is renewed because God poured in the oil and the wine. God poured in the oil and the wine. Galatians 6, 9, let's not grow weary in doing good. For our in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. The English Standard Version. Don't give up. One, keep going. There are times when God speaks to us. Empty some things out at the altar. This is why the altar is important. This is why we do it every time we gather. We have a baptism. We're going to have an altar call. We have a, 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 a birthday party. There's an altar call. We're going to have an altar call. You know? It's because, man, there's something in our heart, man. This is where we have church. We have an altar call. Because it's, if we let you go without an altar call, that things will pile up. If you never answer an altar call, things are starting to pile up. You don't let them go. You need to pile. They're going to be piling. Sin takes control of your life. It's the little offenses that take hold, take hold, and make a person bitter. See, we need to let it go tonight. Deal with it at an altar. Deal with it at this moment, at this time. Say, God, you're speaking to me. God, you're helping me. God, I need to let that go. Don't let it hinder you. Remember, God has so much for you. Remember, he gave you grace and mercy. And he says, if you would just allow me to move in your life, that grace and mercy can help you filter this as well. Taking off our shoes makes us more sensitive. When God called Moses, he says, take off your shoes for this is holy ground. Taking off your shoes, we start to feel things. Because what happens in that course of life, our shoes, if you've been in the military, you gain calluses over the years of blisters and it comes hardened. But God says, I don't want you to be hardened to me. Take off your shoes that you would hear from me. And once again, that hardened soul, that hardened issue can now feel again. You can hear my voice. You can be instructed. You can be guided. And God can refresh your spirit and not grow weary no more. Lighten your pack tonight. Allow God to minister, God to help you. Deal with some things. Not tomorrow, not next week. Deal with some sin. Sin in your life, man. Deal with it. Respond to God. Say, God, help me. There's areas of our life that let, 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 let bygones be bygones. I don't even know what a bygone is, but let bygones be bygones. <laughs> but yet there's things, man, hey, I need to let go of things. Keep your accounts short. Let's keep going for God. Keep going for God, and God's grace and God's mercy can help us. You've got burdens. You've got fear. You've got worries. Can I tell you, come to the living God. And he will strengthen you. And we're able to have that breath, that second wind, that rushing wind to propel us to the end. God needs to help us and provide for us, and he will. We would just come to him and ask God to help us. Amen. I would like every head bowed, every eye closed in reference to God this night. Amen.
for the God who can answer. I love the scriptures when they say, but God. This and this happened, but God. This and this happened to this person, but God. And all through the scriptures you can find those statements, those scriptures that say that word, but God. The enemy came against me, but God. And in those moments I love because God has the upper hand. God is able to move. And maybe even tonight you look at yourself, you see your situation. God, I've never responded to your grace, your mercy. I never asked you to be the Lord of my life. And I think right now, God, I don't know if I'm even worthy, but God. God, I'm beyond hope, but God can change your life this night. Can change you, set you free, give you hope. It's dealing with the issues of our life. It's dealing with those little things. It's dealing with sin. Maybe tonight I can't define your sin, but you know what God would speak to you. You know what it is. Maybe tonight you're not saved. You never gave your life to Christ. You never Allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life. And tonight God calls to you, son, daughter. You're not right with me. I've called to you. You rejected me, but I call yet again. You've strayed, but God. And all His grace and all His mercy can change your life. But God can change you. And set you free. And tonight, you never repented. You never gave your life to Jesus. I would love nothing more than to pray with you. To lead you in a prayer of salvation. Now, you might know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And with every head bowed, every eye closed, it's between you and God tonight. You're not right with God. Would you respond saying, God... It's me. I've let the little things, I've let sin grab hold of my life. It's, I blamed you, God. I've blamed other people. But tonight, God, I'm getting it right with you. And I want to get my affairs right with you. And I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Amen. With an uplifted hand, would you say yes to Jesus Christ? I want that prayer. I'm not here to embarrass you. But simply lift your hand right up, right down. Say, Pastor, I'm not right with you. I'm not saved. I'm not born again. Or you backslid. You once walked with God. You once walked with God. And over the time, it's the little things, the little sin that has grabbed hold of your heart and you can't see what you once were. Man, I'm, I'm way past that, God. I don't know if you can call me back. God says, I call to you. I can change you and you would respond. You're backslidden. You're away from God. You're not saved this night. Would you lift your hand saying, Pastor, pray with me. I want to know Jesus as my Lord, my Savior. Would you lift your hand right up? Write down, for I can pray with you. I love nothing more than have that prayer request answered tonight for your soul to be saved, to be born again. Would you lift your hand all over this place, souls and lives? Amen. Would you lift your hand? Then, saints, it's the time of the assault. It's the straw that broke the camel's back. What do you mean, a straw can do? No, it's the piling on. It's finally the straw. It's the one that I can't take it no more. It's because you've held on to things. You've held on to things. You've been hurt and violated, ripped off, and it's very, very real. But you've never dealt with the issues. Maybe you have, but you allowed it to build back up, and God would speak to you. Son, daughter, allow your account to be forgiven. Come to me. Pour out your sins, and that I might pour in the oil and the wine. And that you would receive a word in due season, not of discouragement, not of rebuke, but of hope. You've carried too many things. And God, I need your help. And that God would move on our hearts and our lives. That we do not grow weary, but we can have that strength that God promises if we wait and trust in Him. And God can meet us at this altar. We need to deal with this. God, help me. God, help me. 
And God can do that if we would just respond. Let's stand. Amen. These altars are open. Will you come and pray? Maybe there's an area of your life, some things, man, God, I, I just need to respond. God, I need to respond. God, help me. And let it go tonight. Pour out those concerns, those cares, those things that weigh us down, that irritate us, that vex us, that torment us, the fears we might have. And lay them at the altar of God and deal with these things. God, help me. I lay them at your feet, God. Help me this night.